Boy, I tell you what, God is good, and it is a great day, good people. This is Monty Mont here, and I want to thank you for investing in the Shareholders Podcast on the Mighty Sharp Network. Man, I'm excited. I have a great guest in store for you guys today. I am a little bummed out that y'all can't see her, but that's just kind of the technology. You know, we're trying to get it all set, but that's my fault, you know. I'm going to talk to somebody at uh, Apple in a minute after this. But anyway, we ain't going to dwell on the next. <laughs> I have, she is a owner of at least two, two um, companies right now. But you can catch her. She's online and she goes by the name of Care. It's in Care Monique on Instagram where I saw her. How are you doing today, ma'am? How's things going for you? I am doing very, very well. Thank you for having me. Yes, this is, I appreciate you coming on. And really, honestly, this is kind of the power of social media because apparently we follow each other, but I didn't know that. You know, I follow a lot of people, so, you know, folk get lost in the shuffle, but I saw her doing a spot for one of her businesses and I was so impressed with what she said. And I said, man, now that's exactly the type of person I want on this show for businesses and all that. So it goes to show you how um, social media can be a positive. So let's get right into it. Now, you are the owner of two two businesses. One is called True to Size Shoes and the other is called The Crew Cosmetics. Yes. Now, I used to sell women's shoes at Nordstrom in, back in my day, so I do know a little bit about women's shoes and I know nothing about cosmetics, so we gonna, I'm going to learn some things today. But uh, what made you want to uh, start these companies in either one, whatever one you want to start with? Um, so well, I'll start with True to Size Shoes because True to Size Shoes is my baby. And that is the okay. one that has gotten me. That started my entrepreneurial journey. Um, True to Size Shoes, I started in particular for women with larger feet, those of us in non-standard sizes and widths. So I personally wear a size 11. But I am a fashionista. I am a diva. I love all things fashion. And I don't feel like I should have to wear men's boots or combat boots <laughs> or sneakers all the time. So the reason that I started True to Size shoes originally was because there were no attractive uh unique foot there was like no attractive unique footwear for those of us above like a size nine that was in mainstream stores or that we could easily access online and be able to get it within a few days typically it had to be custom made and it would take you know weeks to months to yeah. get to us so i decided that true to size shoes was going to be the solution for that so i actually carry sizes five all the way up to size 13 my 13 sell out first i did when i tell you when i first started this uh shoe store people laughed people were like women don't wear size 13 i was like first of all there's the myth right there there's this caveat that like people think oh right, right. you're a woman you can't have large feet um or feet which i don't even think a 13 is necessarily super large i think it's, it's normal there are so many women that wear this size but people don't believe that um so if you do ever go to my site and you'll notice that the 13s are always kind of like I'll release something and within a day or two, we have no 13s because there really is a need. So that is why I started True to Size Shoes. Um, the Crew Cosmetics. So the Crew Cosmetics is actually going to launch in a couple of weeks. It's launching um, late winter, early spring. And the reason that I started the Crew Cosmetics is not because I just wanted to end into the beauty industry, which I think a lot of people recognize the beauty industry is a really, really popping industry. But I really wanted to use an avenue that was familiar and oftentimes um, kind of a place of kind of understanding for for women for those of us those of us that are experiencing adulthood almost in what I would like to call a uh, an invisible or a lonely way. I've realized that as an adult, and in particular as a Black woman, I live in a city called Grand Rapids, Michigan, and Grand Rapids is a very, very white town. Um, yeah. Although there are lots of things for people of color to do, it is predominantly white. And I recognize moving here as an adult. I moved here when I was 24 years old. Um, I'm in my 30s now. And I still have yet to really find a way to make those kind of connections or those uh, those crews that I used to have when I'm from Detroit. I mean, black girl from the inner <laughs> city. 
talk about a total culture shift, the total culture shock for me. So I was like, I can't be the only one. So I started basically posting like Facebook statuses and basically posting and I'm in different makeup groups and things like that on Facebook and Instagram. And I noticed that there were other women who were like, yeah, I don't have a close knit crew here. It's just me and my cousin or it's just me and my kid or me and my spouse. Or there was nobody who had a, a concrete group of women. So I was like, what better way for me to figure out how to you know, bring all these women that are experiencing um, this sense of loneliness together than through makeup, through cosmetics, through beauty, something that most of us can appreciate in some facet. So I'm still yeah. figuring out how I'm going to make that work um, without it looking or feeling just like a Facebook, because it will still kind of be an online platform. But I'm looking at using cosmetics to be in um, to create kind of um, regional hubs where women can connect online and then actually have regional meetups um, where oh, they can okay. put their crew. Okay. So that is how the Crew Cosmetics kind of came about. And we, uh, a good thing to know about the Crew Cosmetics is that we are not meant to be a full cosmetic line. I started the Crew, crew Cosmetic with the thought of being an accent. So we'll sell lipsticks, kind of your accent pieces to your makeup, your lipsticks, your eyeshadows, your highlighters, the things that you put on to kind of pop, make it look pop. And that's the same way that I think of women in my crew. Each of us bring something to the table that makes us pop, or each of us provides something, you know, to bring that full look or that full piece um, together for our, for that person or for our entire crew, crew yeah. it gives us that personality. So that is um, kind of where the crew cosmetics came from, and I'm super. Okay, excited. now you you said there's an acronym right for crew. What is that? There you is. Said? So it is cultivating relationships that empowers women. I'm sorry, I don't know why I didn't start with that. No, I, yeah, yeah, I love that. That yeah. is that is <clears throat> okay. I got to recap on a few things you said. First of all, I'm in Las Vegas. But your man grew up in Lansing, Michigan. So I'm a Michigan boy. I know exactly what you're talking about. Detroit, Grand Rapids, it's a very different, <laughs> it's totally different, two totally different cities, yes. yes. And I want to go real quick to your what you said about true size shoes. Because like I said, I when I moved here to Las Vegas, I worked at Nordstrom and I sold women's shoes. And let me tell you something. I had a, I had a notion, you know, Vegas is a party town. So I'm like, man, I'm going to be, selling Jimmy Choo's and Red Bottoms. First of all, most of my clientele was always asking me for some comfortable flats, number one. <laughs> and then number two, because at Nordstrom, we went up to a size 14. And you are right. We could never, my clients, I could never keep, they would say, any, any shoe you get size 12, 13. Call me. Come call me, right. And we would, that would be my best sellers. And like you said, I didn't even know women that, wore those sizes until I started working there. And then I realized, man, a lot of women wore this. So mm -hmm. what I love about what you said is that your entrepreneurial spirit came from seeing a need where, mm -hmm. you know, man, people, women need this. Let me, let me try to help. And that's to me, one of the great things about me doing this podcast and talking to people is kind of seeing the origin story of why did you start this? Why would you do this? And you were like, well, I see there's a, there's a need. And that's, that's the whole thing of business is supply and demand, you know, and, and it's kind of taken off. So I want to ask you then, we deal a lot with mentorship on this show. Is there anybody that has mentored you or helped you along this way? Of Now you're just all in this. You're doing a whole lot. Like anybody helped you? Uh, absolutely. I definitely don't think uh, an entre entrepreneurial journey should be a lonely journey. It, that There's all, well, almost no way to succeed in that way um, because I you need to pull on resources. I know I needed to. Um, so I actually got my start with an accelerated program here in Grand Rapids called Spring GR. And it's a 12-week accelerator, um, three hours a week plus uh, business coaching. So my business coach, his name is Chris Mathis. He was phenomenal. And now I've graduated. So he was my business coach while I was in this 12 week course. And then I graduated to kind of like the advanced coach. So, uh, Ata Obande is who my, who is my coach now and the entire spring GR team, they kind of walk with me. I graduated from spring GR in Mar June of 2018 and they stay with you for two years after that. And then they also link you to other resources and other folks within Grand Rapids. So I'm a part of a network called Grand Rapids uh, Opportunities for Women, which is GROW. Um, I'm a part of the uh, SBDC here in my area. Quite a few different um, 
um, organizations that are within kind of the Michigan and West Michigan area. And then I would have to say personally, I have a friend. She's not even in business. But when I tell you she has sewn into my business, she has prayed for my business. Like she literally she's the friend that calls me up and it's like, sis, I saw this vision of you doing this. Or (laughs) doing this. Um, So just, you know, really, I think really I have to give a little credit to my friend Tanisha, um, who has just she's not even into business, but she's really in tune with God and takes her friendships very seriously. So uh, recognizing that she's been on this journey with me. um, So those are probably, I would have to say kind of my top three folks. And then my husband, um, who I think just keeps me with a level head. I am a dreamer. I'm very futuristic. My husband, (laughs) he is very much logical. Um, (laughs) he, He is all about do your thing, babe. But at the same time, he like, recognize once that money is gone, that that money is gone. So yeah. you need to make sure that you prioritize and plan it appropriately. So I think that he helps me. He, he ensures that the message that I put out aligns with the money that I spend, um, which yeah. is very, very important in business. <laughs> that is that is key. And it, I really love that you have the structure in place, but you also put the time in to be educated and to learn and you join the business group. I know a lot of people, man, I want to do this business. I want to do this business. And you have the dream, you know, and I've said on this show before, and I'll probably say a lot more times that faith without the works is dead. So you have to really put the time in. And I really, and you kind of got into my next question just about networking and the, the beauty of that, especially with what you're doing in terms of fashion. And I've seen your, uh, I've seen your Instagram and you put it, you got a lot of different clothing and little How's this outfit and all that? And I want you, can you kind of speak to just, I mean, again, the fact that you're on the show is through social media, but the power of social media with what you do in terms of the shoes and the cosmetics and the fashion, how important is that for a person in your business? Um, in the fashion industry and in business in general, I think it's super important, but in the fashion industry, it's extremely important. I think it's almost my number one platform. For one, my businesses are e-commerce. And then two, it allows me to reach an audience that's not right in front of me. Now, granted, I live in Grand Rapids, which is a city, um, but it's not a fashion heavy city, if that makes yeah. sense. So uh, folks here don't dress like me. I dress very much like a New Yorker. I dress very much <laughs> like, you know, a Detroit girl. You know, I, I, I definitely don't dress for the, the small city that I, well, it's not very small, but the smaller city that I'm in. Um, so I think that it allows social, social media and it, the internet in general um, opens up your platform for you to not only reach the customer that you need, because that's a, let me slow down and back up a little bit. One thing that you always need to remember in business is just because you live one place, it doesn't mean your customer lives there or it doesn't yeah. mean your customer has to live there uh, because I'm passionate about fashion. And because I saw a need within the fashion industry, it doesn't mean that my primary customer lives where I live. It just means that that need is out there, period. And actually, the majority of my clientele does not come from the West Michigan area, which is where I do most of my in-person marketing. So it just goes to show you right then that, you know, if most of my marketing and most of my sales um, are coming from my Internet presence, you know, it shows just the value that there is there. I would say Instagram and Facebook are my biggest avenue for one, because they're not only uh, popular social media platforms, but they're engaging platforms. They're ones where we can actually talk back and forth. Uh, a yeah. customer, I think customers really, really enjoy that personalization piece. I struggled a little bit with putting myself behind my brand because I was like, oh, I'm a black girl, just a black girl from Detroit. Are people going to not buy my stuff? Because it's like, oh, this is a regular black girl from Detroit. Um, yeah. but I actually, I had, you know, I prayed about that. And, you know, God, God has a plan for all of our lives. And I was like, first of all, I need to build up the confidence in myself to recognize that, first of all, I'm valuable enough to be a part of this brand because it is. Yeah. Um, and I think I noticed a huge shift when I put myself in front of the brand opposed to when I was just posting pictures of shoes. When I started to talk on my story, when I started to ask folks questions, when I started to post pictures of me and saying, hey, I'm actually wearing these shoes. How would you have styled this? 
there was a completely different um, kind of engagement that came from my customers. First of all, folks wanted to know more. Folks are like, where do you get this skirt? Do you dress like this all the time? I began to build relationships and actually have conversations um, with folks. So I think it's very, very um, valuable. And those became my returning customers too, because now they know me. So now when I see an email, I can send it with my with my voice attached to it. Like my yeah. personality can shine. Mm-hmm. And people really, really gravitate to that. People like to buy from people and not just uh, just any store, like all your big yeah. name brands. If you notice, there. I mean, Jimmy Choo. You might not see Jimmy Choo, but it's attached to a person. You know, right, right. Louis Vuitton. They're attached to a name, to a person, um, and people really, really like that personalized feeling. And also, if they have a problem, folks love to know they're talking to a human. Um, and then it also, you know, it really takes the value of your customer service up when you are the face behind it. Because if I'm the face behind it, I'm gonna do all I can for my customer. Because first of all, I don't want you bad mouthing me. Uh, <laughs> I don't want you bad mouthing my company. But I think it adds that extra touch. So social media has really, really been able to do that um, for me take something that feels so big and so far stretched and make it really personalized um, because people can choose to opt in or opt out that's the other nice thing about it so that you really get you get to focus on those that want what you're offering yeah that's that is so well said and even how you talked about putting yourself as the face of it is so true because i when i saw you talking about the, the crew cosmetics it really made me connect with you because I'm like, she's really behind what she's saying as opposed to maybe just if you were to put some nail polish out or whatever. Yeah. Lord knows I wouldn't have known nothing about that. I'm like, I don't know what that is. Right? I don't know what about. But putting yourself out there, even if it's a little scary, it, it really helps people connect because it feels like, okay, this isn't just some conglomerate and they're just pewing out products, but this is a person that's really behind this as well. So this entrepreneurial spirit you have is that something you always had? Is it something you kind of stumbled in? Because there's people have different origin stories. You know, there's, I think, you know, one person is just like, man, I was just a, a housewife or I was just a guy that worked in plumbing and I stumbled into this. And the other people are like, man, I've been grinding since I was four, you know? So <laughs> where did this come from for you? Um, I think it came from my mom. To be honest, my mom does not necessarily have an entrepreneurial spirit, um, but my mom has the spirit to connect with people. Um, My mom is in education. She's always been the person. If someone needed something, my mom figured out how to get it. Um, My mom made sure everybody had a Christmas. My mom made sure all of her students ate. My mom made sure if a parent had an issue, she helped them figure it out. Um, So I think just watching my mom... um, kind of use critical thinking, watching my mom troubleshoot um, without formal education. That was the thing that I think my mom now has a master's degree, but she went to school after me. My mom just got her degree a couple of years ago in her 50s. Um, But I think really watching my mom as I was growing up um, really just kind of put this push in me and this drive to make sure that I, for one, stuck to my promises and that two, that I use, I always use critical thinking. And I think critical thinking plays into entrepreneurship um, ultimately. And for me, it was a matter of, I saw, I literally live for fashion. I live for beauty. I'm a huge advocate for women and black women in particular, um, really being able to thrive. And I think that the only way we can truly thrive is to do it together. Um, so yeah. I think for me, I saw all these areas that we were connected in, but we were also disconnected in. And I was like, how do I bring this to life for folks? And I was like, what other way than through the way that I love, um, which was fashion. But my mom, when I was little, back to mom, mom had me selling some everything. When I was little, <laughs> like, if I wanted something, my mom, I didn't realize this when I was young, but my mom was raising us. She's a single mom. She raised us on an income of $22,000. I don't know wow. how you raise children like that, but we wow. won't for nothing. But my mom would literally fry chicken wings. We called them wing wings. She would Come fry on. chicken wings for me. And we I would put one piece of bread, three chicken wings, little wing dings in a sandwich bag. And I would <laughs> open the school and I would sell them. And when I, did, I would sell out before first hour, like literally before first hour. And then from there, I started adding chips and Capri Sun so you could get a whole little snack bag <laughs> for me. With my mom at the time, you know, we had food stamps. 
Um, so she was able to put just a tiny bit with the food stamps to add, you know, to get, be able to give us a little yeah. bit um, of extra money. We would buy a seven dollar bag of chicken. I remember the, the loaf of bread was ninety seven cent, and we would go <laughs> to Better Made is a the chip company that's actually in Detroit. We would go yep, to the yep, yep. factory. We would get that sixty pack uh, box of chips. <laughs> yes. <laughs> $15. And when I tell you, I mean, I would make bank and I would come home. My mom would only take what she needed to buy more. And that's how I literally bought new school clothes. That's how um, anytime my mom, like if I wanted to do an extracurricular activity. And it's not that my mom really didn't want me to do it. She just really didn't have it. So she had yeah. to find creative ways to also still allow me to have a childhood. So my mom would do that. When I tell you them, them wing ding snack packs. Uh, pay my <laughs> pay my way through dance and all of that, and I think that carried on into my adulthood. So anytime that I really really needed to figure something out, I did. I did hair throughout college. Like I would braid hair and I would do sew ins. Like mm-hmm. I always kind of added to what I already knew how to do to make sure I could get what I needed. And now it's the wow. lifestyle. <laughs> that that story. I love that you remember the, remember the prices too. You know what I, I mean? Did. Like that, <laughs> that is so awesome. I mean, man. Okay, I, I don't want to hold you too much longer, but I do want to know. So, what ultimately then is your vision of success? Like, how far are we taking this? Like, what do you really want to go? Where do you want to go with all of these businesses and things? Ooh, that's a tough question because I feel like it changes the more and more I learn my customer. Mm-hmm. Um, but based on who my current customer is, and I think I have a really, really solid solid base um, for True to Size Shoes in particular. I know I want True to Size Shoes to become an international brand, a recognized mm-hmm. brand. I actually will be rebranding True to Size Shoes to Faye Nicole soon, which is me and my mother's middle names, because it better aligns with kind of the vision of my shoe line, as well as I think it speaks better to the age range and the type of women that are purchasing um, from me, but I, I yeah. wanted to become an international brand. And then for the crew cosmetics, ultimately, I wanted to become an umbrella hub for a lot of different um kind of brand. So I wanted to not only be a cosmetic brand, but I want the crew, really, ultimately I want the crew to be kind of this umbrella where from there stems, you know, some women's empowerment, from there might stem some other businesses that, um, you know, women create. But I wanted mm-hmm. to be just this powerful movement of women that I recognize underneath this brand called The Crew. Um, but we're, we're starting it with The Crew Cosmetics and we'll see where that goes. Man, that is, that is awesome. I love how you you have an energy to you that really just radiates and it is amazing. Um, this is, of course, the shareholders podcast. I'm talking with Care, Care Monique. She is a owner of True to Size Shoes and also the Crew Cosmetics. And she has told maybe the best wing ding story you're going to ever hear. <laughs> so <laughs> I want to just thank you for coming on. Thank you for your time. And this has been uh, standing. What I'm sorry, real quick as we end, what would you tell? And you know that there's plenty of people coming up in the game. What would you tell a young person, especially a young woman, that, man, I want to do that. You know, she sees your Instagram. Man, she's got these fashion things. Just maybe one little piece of advice that you would maybe want to give a young person to maybe just avoid maybe a, a pitfall that you kind of ran into or a, a speed bump that you ran into on your way up. Mm. Don't quit your nine to five before you need to. Mm, okay. Yeah. Oh, nice. I like that. Yeah, we all still we all still grinding a little bit to where, yeah. where we are, but that's that is awesome. Thank you so much. Please, real quick, give your um give your plugs where everybody can find you and all your your websites, things like that. All right. So for the crew cosmetics, you can find me at www.thecrewcosmetics.com and on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at the crew cosmetics and that's c-r-e-w cosmetics with the s on the end and for true to size shoes you can find me at www.true to size shoes.com the two is numeric but you can really type it anyway i bought all of them anyway you <laughs> um, and you can also find me on instagram on twitter and on facebook at true to size shoes.com i mean i'm sorry at true to size shoes um and if you're Hearing this after March, uh, Faye Nicole, F-A-Y-E-N-I-C-O-L-E. 
Nice, nice, nice. Okay, you're anything you read lately you want to share with us? Any books? Absolutely. Um, yeah. I think every year I read Rich Dad Poor Dad by uh, Oh, yes. Yeah, like it's, a, it's a, just just to refresh your uh, financial literacy and get you on the right track. Um, I wrote down a couple books. Uh, the Lean Startup is a great read. I haven't read it recently, but I read it a while back. Uh-huh. Profit First by Mike McCallowitz changed the way that I saved money in my business. So I would definitely recommend Profit First. And then the myth uh by michael gerber is also an amazing amazing book so nice like my book nice i like that you gave us a couple too that's awesome i always yeah. love to hear what people are reading thank yeah. you so much people i told y'all we coming hard this year i'm giving you some amazing guests and she just blew me away just with this interview right here catch us of course mighty sharp show.com this is the shareholders podcast in the network we're looking, please support. Okay, come on. She she a Michigander like me. Support her. Come on, ladies, get them shoes, especially those in the in the higher sizes. I know there's a market for y'all out there now. So I'm reading you that. So please check us out. Of course, I'm on Instagram as well. Thank you so much, Kara. And I, I want to just peace and blessing to you and your family. And I wish you the best of success. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. All right.